This video is about signal encoding, specifically digital signal encoding. I've listed several encoding methods on the left here, and we have a sequence of bits up on top. I'm going to show you how to encode this bit sequence using each of these digital signal encoding methods. Now, the means that we have to encode these signals is via different voltage levels. So for each encoding method, I will draw a line indicating how the voltage level alternates as the encoded bit changes. The first method I'll be discussing is non-return to zero level. This method is pretty straightforward. It's more or less what you'd expect for encoding bits. We have one voltage level corresponding to zero and another voltage level corresponding to one. We'll actually be using a positive voltage level to correspond to a zero. So let's say that this is some positive voltage and we have another zero, so we continue to have that positive voltage. But then when we encounter the one, the voltage level drops down. And because we're using digital encoding methods, we have very sharp angular waves here. And now we have a lower voltage level to represent the one. And the next one is that same level. And then we go up again for the zero, down for one, up for zero, down for one, and we stay down for this sequence of ones, and then up again at the end for some zeros, and then a final one at the end. So this is a straightforward encoding scheme. I can look at the signal, and I know immediately that the high values are zeros and the low values are ones. The next encoding method, non-return to zero invert is an example of a differential encoding method. With this encoding method, it is not immediately obvious which bit we are encoding simply by looking at the signal because each bit we encode will depend on the preceding bits. So we have to have some sort of starting point for this. So we'll assume that we start at the lower voltage level but every time we encounter a one, we will change the voltage level. So I start at the low voltage level. I have a zero, so I stay at that level still. But then when I encounter a one, the voltage level jumps. And it is this change in voltage level that indicates that a one is what is being encoded next. And then we have another one occurring, so we change the voltage level again. Next, we have a zero, and we do not change the voltage level when we see a zero. But we have a one next, so we'll change and go up high. And then here, we have a zero again, so we'll stay high. And then we have a sequence of three ones, which means we'll be alternating back and forth. So this change encodes a one, and this next change encodes a one, and then this next change encodes the third one. And then the two zeros do not require a voltage level change. And then at the end we have a one, which causes us to jump up, giving us this result here. And let me just emphasize again that we have zeros being encoded both with low voltage levels and here with high voltage levels. Similarly, this one has a high level and this one has a low level. So it isn't just the current voltage level that indicates what bit was being encoded. It's the whole history of the sequence that tells us what the current bit is. Differential encoding schemes like this one can be useful in the presence of noise because detecting a voltage transition is usually easier than assuring that the voltage maintains a certain level. Both of these schemes require use of two distinct voltage levels. The next two schemes involve 
three voltage levels. For this reason, they are known as multi-level binary schemes. The first of these is bipolar AMI, and the AMI stands for alternate mark inversion. Bipolar AMI represents a zero with no line signal, so essentially zero voltage. So these first two zeros are simply a flat line. This is the middle voltage level. Now the way we encode a one depends on how any preceding ones were encoded. So we will start off with an assumption that the last one that we encoded had a negative voltage. Now this scheme is called alternate mark inversion because we alternately switch between giving ones a positive and negative voltage. So this first one will have a positive voltage level and then this next one we encounter will have a negative voltage level. And then we have a zero and so we return to our zero voltage level. Now on the other side of this gap we have another one and because this preceding one had a negative voltage, this next one has a positive voltage. And then we have a zero, which is flat again, and then three ones in sequence. And so the first will be negative because this one was positive. And we simply alternate from there. Now at this point we have two zeros, so we have a flat signal for two time units. And then we end with a one, which will be positive because of this one having a negative voltage. So in this scheme, zero is always encoded with no line signal, a middle level of zero voltage. And the one goes back and forth between positive and negative voltage on either side of the zero voltage. The alternations in the ones provide extra synchronization information for the receiver. Long sequences of bits can be stretched or distorted by transmission and the clocks of the sender and the receiver may drift a little bit over time. But if we have a sequence of ones each of these transitions will indicate to the receiver where the bit transitions occur, helping to resynchronize. Of course, we still have a problem if we send a long sequence of zeros. We'll address that issue in another video. For now, I'll move on to pseudo-ternary, which is essentially the opposite of bipolar AMI. Pseudo-ternary encodes ones with a flat line signal and encodes zeros with alternating positive and negative voltages. So therefore, we once again need to know what the preceding zero was encoded with to start off this signal. So let's assume that before our sequence of bits starts, we had a zero that was encoded with a negative voltage. Therefore, this first zero will have a positive voltage. The next one will be negative and then this one will be the neutral zero voltage, as will this one. Then we have a zero again, this will have a positive voltage, and then a one is a flat line again, and then this zero will be negative, and then we have three ones in a row, so we simply have a flat signal in this range, and then a zero, which will be positive, the next one will be negative, and then a flat line for the last one. So that is how pseudo-ternary works. The final two encoding schemes, Manchester and differential Manchester, are biphase encoding schemes. These schemes involve extra voltage transitions in the middle of each interval. This requires an increased data rate, which is costly, but the benefit is that these extra transitions provide synchronization information to the receiver. 
the Manchester scheme encodes a zero with a transition from a high voltage level to a low voltage level in the middle of an interval. A one is encoded with a transition from a low to high voltage level. Whether or not there are transitions in the middle of each interval depends on whether or not the voltage level needs a change to prepare for the next signal that will be encoded. So for example, this zero is encoded with a drop in voltage level in the middle of this interval. The next bit we will encode is also a zero, which means that the voltage level needs to rise up between intervals so that it can drop back down again to represent zero. Now the next bit we're encoding is a one, which means we do not rise up between intervals. We simply maintain this lower voltage and then the rise in voltage level occurs here in the middle of the interval. Similarly, to encode the next one, we must drop at the transition between intervals so that we can rise up again to represent the one. So just remember that every zero will have a downward transition in the middle of the interval and every one will have an upward transition in the middle of the interval. So down for zero, and then up for one, and then here because we have another one coming up, we go down between intervals so that we can go up for the one, and then down again between intervals, and then up for the one, and then here we go down for zero, and then up in between, and then down for zero, and then finally up in the middle of the last interval to represent the one. So Manchester is a scheme in which we can tell exactly which bit is being encoded simply by noting which direction the transition is in the middle of the interval. We can ignore the transitions between intervals when we are decoding the signal. Of course, the sender has to make sure that it accounts for those transitions so that we'll be at the right starting point for each interval. Differential Manchester is both biphase and differential. And remember that being differential means that each signal or bit we encode depends on the previous bits we encoded. The differential Manchester scheme will always have a voltage transition in the middle of every interval. The information of whether we are encoding a one or a zero is done based on whether there are transitions between intervals. Specifically, a zero is encoded with a transition at the beginning of an interval, and a one is encoded with a lack of a transition at the beginning of an interval. The result looks like this. To represent that this zero is being encoded, we actually have to show that the beginning of this interval has a transition. Then, in the middle of the interval, we will transition back up because every single interval has a transition in the middle of it, even using differential Manchester. And then the next zero once again requires a transition at the beginning of the interval. So the fact that I've drawn a line here and here represents that there's a zero and then a zero. And then we transition in the middle of the interval. And here is where we encode a one. So a one is encoded by the lack of a transition at the beginning of the interval. So I will not be going down, but I do transition downward in the middle of the interval because we transition in the middle of every interval. And here, once again, we're encoding a one, so there will be no transition at the beginning of this interval, but there will be one in the middle of it. So one way of encoding when using differential Manchester is to simply think of this bit string as being positioned not onto 
the center values of the interval themselves, but at the borders. So a zero is there because there's a line, and then a zero, then a one, then a one. This zero requires us to draw a transition there. And then this one means there's a lack of a transition. And then this zero means there will be a transition here. And then this one means there's no transition there. In fact, we have three ones in a row, so that's a one, one, one. But then we have two zeros, so I'll transition at the beginning. And then at the beginning again, always transition in the middle. And then the final one has no transition there. And that is how we encode this sequence using differential Manchester. So let me just drive home again how you can visualize what's happening with differential Manchester. Whenever there is a transition at the beginning of the interval, we have a zero there. There's a zero, zero, one, whenever there is no transition. Zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one. And you can see that this bit sequence matches exactly what we encoded there. So that wraps up this video on basic digital encoding schemes, but we will be addressing some more complicated issues in a later video and also be looking at analog signal encoding.